being on someone's back is the best position in jiu-jitsu. That's why it's really important that we understand how to maintain back control. So I'm going to show you the basic techniques behind back control, some of the principles that you'll want to keep in mind, and then I'm going to show you three really common escapes that people are going to use and how we're going to react to each of them. So we're going to show how to control the back generally, we're going to show what happens if he pushes a straight back, we're going to see what happens if he tries to escape to one side, then we're going to see what happens when he tries to escape from the other side. This is going to, I hope, provide you a template for how to control the back in the future. So, first thing. So if you ask, sits in front of me, and I'm on his back. People make a really big deal about the hooks, and the hooks can definitely be useful for control. These things here, that are my feet inside his hips, are just hooks. And can I use them to control him? Yes. Usually I turn to the right a little bit, right? I can use the hook to stop him from going that way, turn to the left, right? I can stay attached to them. The thing is, the hooks, other than giving you four points in a jiu-jitsu tournament, are not the only way to control the back, and the seat belt is much, much, much more important. So we're going to talk about a good seat belt control, which is the upper body control that we use, and then uh, talk about how to maintain that. So the first thing to understand, you have a choking hand, a hand that goes over the shoulder, and, and a control hand, a hand that goes under the shoulder. Underhooks are good for lifting, overhooks are good for choking, right? If I try to choke him with this hand, it doesn't work at all, right? Just can't do it. With this hand, I can choke him, but it's very difficult for me to control him. And what I mean by that is, like, and I'm just gonna ask you to do our standard uh, uh, escape where you scoot your butt down, right? So go ahead and scoot your butt down. So this does nothing to stop him from escaping. But, come on, come back up. If I feel him trying to scoot his butt down, and I go double unders, now I have a lot of control, right? So usually you're gonna to wanna to have one overhook and one underhook. The reason for this is you always want to be able to threaten the choke and you always wanna have something that controls him. So this hand comes in front and I cover my overhooking hand with my underhooking hand. The choking hand is hidden. Now I want my sternum in the middle of his spine, I want my ear next to his ear, not so I can hear his thoughts, although that's a nice joke that I like to make, but because I want to stay tight to him. So now, if you ask moves to the right, or move to, and just move around with this. See, no matter where he goes, I'm stuck to him, always ready to start attacking. If I let my head separate from him, my chest separate from him, and he moves like that, see how, like, not only am I not able to threaten this choke anymore, but he's already on his way to getting out, and I'm not even, he's not even really doing it. So I want my sternum attached to his spine, my ear attached to his ear, and my chin on his shoulder. Overhook, underhook. My underhook hand covers my overhook hand, and my elbow is pinched gently back. And so now if he moves, I stay attached to him like a backpack. You might ask. I'm going to go ahead and sit back up. <laughs> so you might ask, why does this hand cover that hand? You would ask, peel my top hand. If he just reaches for the hand he can find and peels it, I just choke him. You will hear some people say that you can't choke someone with one arm. Those people are wrong, like flat out. If you ever feel an arm over your, around your neck, you must address it. Conversely, if I have this hand covering that hand, and he has grabs for the first hand, now he's neutralized my threat. Now it's not the end of the world because I'm still on his back, still having a much better day than he is, but I can't threaten the choke anymore. So I always wanna hide my choking hand. So quick recap. And, and I'll, just to demonstrate, right, the hooks are nice, the seat belt or what some people call the harness is necessary. So my sternum attaches to the spine, my ear is next to his ear. Overhook, underhook. Underhook is for control, it covers my overhook, my elbow is gently pinched back, it gets me attached to them. And now just to demonstrate that this is more important than the hooks, I'm just gonna take out the hooks and you only have to move around and try and get out. If you have the harness, you can get the hooks back. If you don't have the harness, or if you don't have the harness, you're probably not going to be able to control the back. So those are some base back control principles, and like really invest the time in getting a good harness control, and it will pay dividends. So now let's talk about some of the things that he might. And Elias has just has been been uh, helpful by just kind of moving around, right, to demonstrate whether there's space and whether there's not space. But now he's going to do some things that people are actually going to try to do 
to get out. And we're going to start in, uh, and basically there, there are four directions he can go, right? He can go down and forward, he can go up and backward, he can go this way, or he can go that way. If we have a good harness, very difficult for him to do our standard escape by scooting out. So what a lot of times guys will do is they will push back on top of you, stepping on the mat, and just push you flat on your back. Now, if you're a smaller guy like me, this is not very pleasant, particularly if the person is much bigger than you are. Also, the choking angle is really bad here, so I can't really threaten the choke as much as I want. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my seatbelt, make active hooks, which is not ballerina feet, but active feet, and I come behind his knees. Now I'm just going to slip and sit. And now you let's try to move around a little bit. My knees are pinching out on his hips, which stops him from moving around, and then I just throw the hooks at my leisure. So he pushes back on top of you, keep the seat belt, take the hooks out, active hooks behind his knees, knees pinch in, and we just sit up, rocking forward. Very easy to come back to the back control. So, really simple technique there, but really useful and very well worth knowing. So, we stop him going this way by having the underhook. When he goes that way, we put our hooks behind his knees and kick him forward. But what if he, so now he can either go to the underhook side or the overhook side. And go ahead and sit, sit up just for a sec, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about theory just for a second. When I started jujitsu, you were taught to always escape to the underhook side. Now, and that's still mostly orthodoxy in the gi, a lot of no gi guys escape to the overhooking side. The reason for that is the escaping to the underhooking side is safer because if he goes that way, I can't choke him with the hand that's that way. Whereas if he goes this way, I can choke him with the hand that's this way. So either he gets choked or he gets out. The reason why usually that's not this way is not as good in the gi is because I can control this gi and choke him with it. Whereas the no gi guys, it's a little slipperier, so um, a little less risky to go that way. Regardless, you can escape either way. Just depends on what technique you use. So let's talk about what happens when he tries to escape to the underhook side. When he tries to escape to the underhook side, what he's gonna do is if he goes that way and clears my hooks, I'm gonna use a motion we've talked about before called the forward shrimp. And I'm gonna show you what the technique looks like with Ilias in here twice, then I'm gonna show it without Ilias in here. So Ilias goes to his left, kicks his leg straight, clears my hook, right? I don't have a hook anymore. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast my foot out, toes on the mat, and I'm gonna pull my body flat and underneath him, and often I'll end up here, which means we have to kick him forward, go back. What I'm doing is, when we shrimp, when we do the shrimping warm-ups that we do every day before class, we're pulling our bodies flat to on getting on our side. For a forward shrimp, our bodies are already on their side, and we stick a leg out, put the toes on the mat, and pull our bodies flat. I'm gonna show one more time with the Ilias in there, and then one time with the mat. So he goes this way, kicks his leg straight, clears my hooks. Only thing he didn't attach them to the seat belt, right? Toes come on the mat, and I'm pulling my body flat. See that? See how I'm on my side? And now I pull my body flat. If we need to, we kick him forward, sit up. So, we're gonna show one more technique for maintenance, but first I'm going to show you what that forward trim looks like without Gilias in there. So, and this exists in other videos, but it's the kind of thing that you can't really work on too much. So our typical shrimp, right, is we're flat on our back, bridge up, move to get on our side. If I have someone's back and they fall this way, I'm already on my side, right? So whichever way my hips are pointed, leg comes out, toes come on the mat, and I pull myself flat, dragging my hips back underneath it. One more time. And you can do this from flat on your back, or imagine that you're on someone's back and they fall this way. Forward shrimp, getting under them. So we've taken care of three of the four directions, right? So what happens if he tries to escape the other way to our overhook side? So in, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the cheat code in the gi is to get this cross collar because then he's not gonna get his back to the mat without choking himself. But assuming it's a no gi situation, it's a self-defense situation where he's not wearing something to use this for or, or whatever, or maybe we just missed it. 
So let's say he scoops down, gets his back to the mat, right? Go ahead and get it back to the mat. When he clears his hook here, I no longer have the underhook, which means I can't control him, right? When he escapes to the other side, I have the underhook that keeps me attached to him so that I can continue to take the back. This time I don't, so what I need to do is remount. My leg comes over, my heel hooks his hip. Come to my elbow, lead with my hips, come to the mat. Did we want to do this? We absolutely did not. We've gone down the positional ladder, but it's really important to learn when your buddy does a good thing, that you don't try to hold on to a sinking ship, and you take what's available to you, which in this case is the mount. If he successfully gets his back flat to the mat, he can, I can no longer be on his back, right? Because his back is on the mat. So we have to, I can be in denial about that, in which case I'm gonna end up in a worse position, like having him on top, or I can take the mount, and that's what we're gonna do here when he escapes to what we'll call the overhook side. So, Ilias escapes to the overhook side. See, and like, see also how it, he's able to, when he separates his head from my head, that's when it starts to go bad for me. But the minute he gets his back on the back, I can no longer be on his back. Leg comes over, heel hooks his hip. I'll show this without Ilias in there one time too. Elbow comes to the mat, and very important, my hips lead the way. I come to the mat. So, Without Elias in there, if I lose it, my heel hooks in on his hip, elbow comes to the mat, posting off these two feet, my hips come up into the mounted position. An ounce prevention is always run the pound of cure. So if you get good at the seatbelt, you'll be really good at shutting down escapes before they start. If they start to escape, and you can shut them down with the, you can shut down their forward motion through underhooks. Awesome. If they push you back, push them back forward. If they escape to the overhook side, uh, to the underhook side rather, we can use the forward shrimp to get back underneath them, take the back again. If they escape to the overhook side, then we have to do something else and probably we'll end up remounting. And that's some basic back maintenance.